Is this housing market stuck? Are people stuck in their current homes right now? Fannie Mae thinks so. Hi, right, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Well, first, who is Fannie Mae? Well, it's not one of your crazy aunts that lives in Oklahoma. Fannie Mae, here's the description right here. It's a leading source of mortgage financing in the United States. We don't originate loans or money directly to borrowers. Instead, we purchase mortgage loans made by lenders who are then able to use those funds to offer mortgage loans to more people. So in other words, Fannie Mae is an agency that after the loan has been made, they purchase it to help free up home more money for lenders to loan to you. So they kind of have a vested interest on where the, you, the market's going in the U.S. Now, does that mean they're accurate? Well, they lost a boatload of money when things went uh, south in 2008. So they're back up and running now and doing fine. But they got down. I think their, their stock was like 13 cents at one point. No, I didn't buy any. That's too bad. But here's what they're saying. The U.S. housing market may be trapped in a prolonged freeze. Now, they've got a... They're, interviewing the guy from Redfin here again, but what they're saying is their economists projected in a revised forecast that stagnation in the housing market could last into 2024, whether the economy avoids a recession or not. Now, that's very interesting because there's a lot of talk out there. Oh, Rick, once we have a recession, here come the listings. People are going to be losing their jobs. Well, that's if we have one. That's looking like we will. You won't know until three months after we're in a recession. So we shall see what happens. And then we have to look at the severity. But then uh, <coughs> the thing that we're looking at is right now, our mortgage rates are running about 7.12% today. They've actually gone down, today being Wednesday, the 30th of August. And uh, so they did climb up to about 7.3, but there's some bad economic news coming out. So rates are starting to come down. Bad news is good for rates. Go figure, huh? Since the central bank wants to see the economy start to cool down, if we see evidence that the economy is cooling down, rates react accordingly. But house prices are still going up. When I look at our when I look at our data here for Arizona, this is an interesting one to me. Year to date, canceled listings. People that listed their house didn't sell. Or for whatever reason, they said, well, I'm going to take it off the market. I'm going to cancel it. It's a little different than expired. An expired listing is you've hired an agent. And you said, well, let's list this thing for three to six months, see what happens. And you just let it expire because you didn't sell it. A canceled listing can happen for a lot of different reasons. You might have a life event that comes up that says, well, I got to cancel this listing. Or you may say, you know what, let's cancel it for the summer. Regardless of the reasons, canceled listings are obviously much higher than 2021 because nobody was canceling listings then. All you had to do is stand on your front porch and go for sale and you had a buyer, so why cancel? But then if we look at last year, 2022, we're running at just about the same rate of canceled listings. Why do I bring this up? Well, if it was getting harder to sell a home right now, then canceled listings would increase and we're not seeing that. I'm also looking at my seven-day moving average that you see me show here quite often and I'm going to show this to you again today. I spread it out a little more to show you all the way back to last year because we talk about seasonality quite a bit and here's where we're at. I'm talking about this flat line right here. See this number of homes under contract is just flat. Now it was trending down last year. These big dipperoos here, these are holidays, November and December. Now we are going to start seeing these numbers gradually come down the closer we get to November, to Thanksgiving. November, December, always slow. They spike back up first part of December, fall off the face of the earth for Christmas, and then where it goes from there, nobody knows. But if I go all the way back to last year at this time and take a look at what was going on, there was this tremendous gap last year. And this is our pending listings. We're still hanging around 3,000 every seven days, but they dip down to again to 2,400 here. We're at about 2,600 today. Apples to apples, we're running about the same. The number of homes going under contract is pretty much record lows because you can see where we ended up at a, uh, about halfway through the year. 
But this is when prices came down. See that gap between new listings coming on and then new contracts? Because that gap was so big, there was pricing pressure. And the pricing pressure was on the downside. Now that gap is very small. New listings coming up just a little bit in the past seven days, but not enough to say anything that's uh, definitive, that says, oh, here we go, we're trending. It was really tight in here, and thus we saw upward pricing pressure. We're sitting at about 80% right now of new listings going under contract every seven days. As long as we stay there, you can expect prices to increase. And the Cromford Market Index, the Cromford people, made a comment about that yet again today in some of their observations of the Case-Shiller Home Price Index. Now, we dropped way down. We're down to 7th place. You can see here in Phoenix. See if I can circle with my handy-dandy little red pen here. At 1.13 year-to-date. So, for those of you waiting for the crash, we're not there yet. In fact, they make a comment here. It says here, Phoenix has risen strongly in this table the past two months from 20th in June to 16th place in July and 7th place in August. The national increase month to date was 0.93%. So Phoenix was just a little ahead of that standard. All of 20 of the 20 cities showed positive price appreciation month to month. Down here, they end by saying, that's not exactly the 40% crash predicted on some YouTube channels over 12 months ago. They're still predicting house prices will crash 40%. They can't help themselves. It's the only story that gets views. Now that they're forecasting credibility is at rock bottom. So kind of hitting them between the eyes a little bit. Will the real estate market crash? That's always out there. Statistically, I think it's a bit of a stretch, uh, but I'm just going to show you what's going on currently in our market. One of the things that I saw the other day was a, a channel that talked about the surge in foreclosures. So you know me, I had to look it up and here it is. This is our surge, folks. There is no surge. Let me get my magnifying glass out. Right down here. That doesn't look like a surge to me. I'll see if I can move this up a little bit. So yeah, it's not quite showing you the way I want to. But anyway, here's where we're at. 272 notices of pre-foreclosure. Doesn't mean they're foreclosures that are for sale. It's people that got notices that say, hey, you're 90 days late. Those people are going to sell. They're not going to foreclose. They don't have to. Some will. But you can look down here in 2020, there was a moratorium. So nobody was going into foreclosure. So you could skip your payments and you were not going to go into foreclosure. This would be considered normal here, which is numbers in the eight to 900 range, 600, 600, 500. This is the debacle that we had. Here's 2009. We hit a peak of 10,558 foreclosures. That's when we saw prices really dip. We're not anywhere near that now. So track that if you're waiting to see what's going on with foreclosures. Another news note that I saw today was HBSC announced a 40-year mortgage. But they only announced it in England. So they're going to try it in England. Will that spread over here? Probably. What does a 40-year mortgage mean? Well, you're spreading your payments out 10 more years. How much relief does it mean? I don't know. I haven't seen the product yet. Um, you're probably going to see more of that goofy stuff show up. But the last thing that we need in our market is more incentive to buy. Because right now, I mean, think about this. We're at the lowest level of inventory or of sales right now that we've had. Record levels. Our record level low is like average is like 2700 every seven days and we're sitting here at 2600 every seven days so sales are down but new listings are also way down so if we increase those sales with different incentives like 40-year mortgages grants or zillow's wonderful new product called one percent mortgages one percent down you're going to increase that sales activity at the bottom you're not going to increase new listings prices are going to go up. So we don't want to see that. So I don't want to see any incentives on the sales side. I know when things were really tight in 2021, the administration was talking about down payment assistance programs. And those, I was kind of screaming from the rooftop saying, don't do it, don't do it, because that wasn't our problem. The problem wasn't that we didn't have enough um, 
you know, money available to buy a house. The problem was, was that you would end up increasing sales without increasing supply. Now, when we look at down payment assistance, this was sent to me by one of our subscribers. Take a look at this. America's Nepo housing market. 23% of home buyers under 30 used a cash gift from family to fund their down payment. There's your down payment assistance program right there. 21% used inheritance money. Money needed to buy a starter home. It says here it's up 13%. It's not lining up correctly here for me from 2022. So you need more money to get into that starter home. And a lot of people are tapping into their parents money and their assistance to get into that starter home so for first time home buyers these are dire times there's just not a product out there for you there's not a payment that fits your budget we're going to be here a while this isn't going to shake out 30 60 90 days unless we have some kind of a credit crisis then all bets are off who knows what the market's going to be from from my desk today it looks like we're going to stay here and that's what fannie mae came out and said looks like we're going to be here for a while central bank sure didn't give us any hope for rate relief and i don't want to see a whole bunch of rate relief because i don't want to see prices start to reaccelerate. i want to see some levelness there i want to see some stability i'd like to see more balance a lot of different ways for balance to come in wages increase i don't see that giving us balance prices coming down that could do it if it comes down too fast you've got imbalance you've got chaos so i'd rather see a gradual decline over time that's more of a pipe dream prop probably or we may just see these high prices stay with us for years i don't know but we're going to track it here thanks for watching do me a favor smash that like button and in the comment section tell me where you're from take care